Good evening. Leading our news tonight. Firstly, costs for immigration permits has been released since the beginning of the year, with most costs remaining the same as previous charges. However, some queries concern the assumptions that the increase jumped to 32.5%. Questions were asked why, at a glance, the list of changes seemed to have risen by 32.5%. Chief of Police, who was also in charge of immigration, said some of the charges have changed, but some costs pr are pro rata, meaning it's fixed, like that of the enter and reside permit, the permanent resident status and extension of visitor visas. The following costs of permits allowed visitors and immigrants to enter and reside in Niwi or extend visas. Enter and reside including 12.5% NCT and 20% added is $125. The work permit visa $420. Permanent residency status $585. Extension to permits or visa $68. Lost certificate $27. One-way airfare or visa waiver, $27, cabinet review, $150, and extension of visitors' visas, $12. For students or children entering and residing, this will set you back $162, $37 more than an adult to enter and reside permit. For study permits, it's $120, and for work permits, $380. Most of the costs include NCT as well as 20%. The recent amended Immigration Act has also made it tougher for those wishing to acquire a permanent residence status, removing the three-year eligibility criteria and replacing it with a tougher requirement of 10 years. Though figures might be high, 14 people received their new permanent residency status this year prior to the amendments. Air New Zealand flight NZ-784 was delayed from departing Niue for over an hour last Friday when a passenger bound for Auckland caused some concern with airport staff, but the dilemma for him did not end there. According to Chief of Police Mark Chenery, the Air New Zealand pilot made a decision to return to the terminal while taxi taking off because of concerns with the 55-year-old passenger who was removed from the flight due to an alleged medical condition. Chief Chenry said the visitor was taken for medical assessment at the hospital and have since returned to the hotel he stayed for the last couple of weeks. He said Newer Police is still waiting for a response from Air New Zealand as to their accounts of the incident but the police will not be pressing charges due to the result from the medical evaluation that the man needs medical care that will be available in New Zealand. The incident was not alcohol-related and the visitor will be on this week's flight bound for Auckland. The new energy-efficient CFL light bulbs have proven a success with households receiving their first installment of free light bulbs last month. This initiative is part and parcel of the European Union-funded Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Partnership project. This week, however, the Public Health Division has issued a precautionary warning for people to take the utmost care when using these bulbs, as fluorescent light bulbs contain mercury, and when they break, mercury vapour is released. This has also sparked some interesting discussions. We spoke with Paul Johnson the project manager for the EDF10 project, about what should be done with the CFL bulbs. We've taken delivery of a box, a uh, container load of them, and we've distributed them. Uh, there are some issues inside the light bulbs with the chemicals that are used, as it's been pointed out in various emails circulating around the place. Um, and it is just a question of disposing of the bulbs in a, in a proper manner, not just throwing them in the rubbish or in, even into the tip. Bring the bulbs back to uh, us here at... Um, NPC or uh, perhaps your local uh, agent who you purchased them from and they will make sure they get disposed of properly without breaking. If you do break them then it really is a precautionary measure to wear gloves and to sweep it up and keep it tidy. If in doubt consult one of the experts like John and they will come and give you some advice on how to get rid of the waste if there is any that's got loose.
Um, it's not quite as um, draconian as, as we suggest. Um, common sense prevails. Um, I know of many people that are far more hazardous than the light bulb, so <laughs> we don't need to get too upset about it. We'll follow up on that and make sure that, that, that there is information out there for people. And they're quite clear on what to do uh, if they have a problem with a broken bulb or they want to dispose of the bulbs that they've got. Certainly there are a number of bulbs that will be out there now that should be brought back. And again, I urge people to bring them back rather than try and dispose of them themselves in a rubbish bag or down at the dump. The message, however, is to take care when using the bulbs and to dispose of them safely once it has reached its full capacity. Nui's quarantine division is tightening up on its regulations and procedures, especially for the importation of domesticated animals. According to Quarantine, a particular oversight within the regulations and processes has raised some issues in regarding to incoming domestic animals. Sources within the department say that the primary concern for quarantine would firstly be the introduction of diseases, also the types of animals brought into the island, whether they are of a vicious breed. But these are not issues in this particular case. Quarantine has made the call to relook at its processes. Now once animals arrive on the island, they will be neutered or spayed. Discussions with the owners has come to some resolution for arrangements for the animals. Quarantine says that in future, any domesticated animals imported must be spayed. Plans for the philatelic and numismatic company to become a corporation will be discussed in the Legislative House of Assembly this Wednesday. The proposal was tabled at the last Assembly meeting but was referred back to the Bills Committee after the second reading. The company does have its own Act that was established in 1996 and the new discussions will be on the amendments. Philatelic and Numismatic will be the fourth government entity to become a corporation. The others are the Broadcasting Corporation of Niue, the Niue Development Bank and Niue Tourism. We will bring you a live coverage of the Niue Legislative Assembly meeting on Wednesday morning. And that is the conclusion of our news bulletin here on BCN for tonight. We do hope that you can join us again for our next news bulletin on Thursday. And don't forget to listen in to Radio Sunshine for the Niue Legislative Assembly meeting tomorrow.